Mr. Secretary General, you heard the President of Ukraine say he would like to be a member of NATO. Will you let him in? NATO's position remains unchanged, and that is that Ukraine will become a member of uh, NATO. Uh, then, of course, the main focus now is to support Ukraine, uh, to ensure that Ukraine wins the war and uh, prevails as a sovereign, independent, democratic nation uh, in Europe. And that's the reason why uh, NATO allies, partners, uh, uh, are providing unprecedented military support uh, to Ukraine and why I'm traveling around to NATO capitals and calling on them to do even more and why I welcome the recent announcement of more armor, more advanced uh, air, air defense systems, uh, most recently by, by, by Canada with 200 armored vehicles and, uh, and also uh, Poland uh, uh, delivering more uh, weapons and of course the U.S. leading all these efforts in, the, in this what we call the, the contact group or the support group for, for uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, and, and as uh, Krista just said, it is extremely important that President Putin doesn't win this war partly because it will be a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but it will be very dangerous for all of us. Because then the message to authoritarian leaders, not only to Putin, but also other authoritarian leaders, is that when they use brutal force, when they violate international law, they achieve what they want. And that will be a very bad and dangerous lesson. It will make, make the world more dangerous and us more vulnerable. And that's the reason why uh, if we want a negotiated peaceful solution to the war in Ukraine, we need to provide military support to Ukraine. That's the only way. Uh, weapons, uh, uh, they are the way to peace. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that may sound like a paradox, but, uh, but the only way to have a negotiated uh, agreement is to convince President Putin that he will not win on the battlefield. He has to sit down and, uh, and negotiate. Nobody knows uh, uh, how this war will end. Most likely it will end uh, around the negotiating table. Uh, what, what we do know is that what happen, uh, happens around that negotiating table is totally dependent on the strength of the battlefield. And if we want uh, Ukraine to prevail, then uh, they need uh, the military uh, strength. Uh, then let me add one more thing. And that is that we are all encouraged, inspired, we admire the, the, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian uh, political leadership, uh, uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, at the same time, I think it's very dif uh, dangerous to underestimate Russia. They have mobilized 200,000 more troops. Uh, President Putin has demonstrated a will to just sacrifice thousands and thousands of uh, young Ukrainian, uh, no, sorry, R Russian uh, soldiers. Uh, they are now acquiring uh, more and more weapons, reaching out to other authoritarian regimes, including uh, 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 Iran. Uh, and they are planning new offensives. So, so it is, as President Zelensky said, there is an urgent need. Time matters. We will meet in Rammstein, uh, NATO allies uh, in the US-led uh, 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 contact group for Ukraine with, with all the many partners. And the main message there will be uh, more support and more advanced support, heavier weapons uh, and, and more we modern weapons. Uh, because. Uh, this is a fight for our values, this is a fight for democracy, and we just have to prove that democracy wins over uh, tyranny and oppression.